I don't care what kind of dough you've got. I don't care what kind of connections you might have. You're not going to get a piece of hardware like this if you stop at Gucci's, if you stop at Barney's, if you stop at Abercrombie and Fitch. The belt, emblematic of World Wrestling Federation supremacy, we welcome the hitman, Bret Hart, a man who will uh, main event, as we mentioned, WrestleMania 12 coming up a week from Sunday out in Anaheim, California, an event that is already sold out, available on a pay-per-view basis. Bret the Hitman Hart versus the boy toy, Shawn Michaels. When you talk about Bret Hart, uh, despite the rather uh, youthful look, you are talking about a man who has been wrestling 17 years, 12 of those under the auspices of one Vince McMahon. Uh, the aches, the pains, the bumps, the bruises, the grunts, the groans, you do get hurt from time to time. Are you allowed to call in sick? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're not. You're not. I mean, I think, you know, it's funny, I've been wrestling 12 years. Uh -huh. um, well, actually, if I can edit all my whole career up, I missed one match working six years for my father, and I missed uh, two years, I think I've missed, or two matches in uh, seven, uh, 12 years in the WWF. I've missed two actual matches where I, something happened and I didn't get there, other than injuries, which uh -huh. are different, but, uh, um, I'm pretty steady. I'm the Lou Gehrig, I think, of, uh, of wrestling. Complete this uh, sentence for me. The single most challenging aspect of working for a man as driven as Vince McMahon is? Um, I don't know. I think that uh, the hardest part for me uh, throughout my career, I think, has always been the uh, the pressure to put on my uh, home life or family life, uh, uh -huh. being a, um, just the, 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 the price you pay as far as your family goes has always been the, the hardest thing. And uh, I think when you consider things in the WWF, you have to look at the, uh, the incredible schedule and the traveling. You know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of real positive aspects to it going all, you know, we just did a big tour of India and you, know, you go around the world and to, to have ha had this, this place of being the celebrated hero in all these places is, is really, really uh, wonderful, but at the same time, it's uh, you pay a tremendous sacrifice at home when you when you don't get to be that same hero just for your own kids. You, know? you uh, mentioned the fact that uh, right now you are a hero, or in the vernacular of the trade, uh, Bret Hart is a babyface, a babyface or a heel. I have seen you when you have been uh, booed out of an arena. What is the fine line between a babyface and a heel, or have we reached a point in time in your profession where there really is no fine line? Well, I think what it is is there's an extra added dimension, I think, to it now. You know, I think you have the white hats, you have the black hats, uh -huh. and then you've got the gray hats, which I'm not quite sure if I'm wearing a gray hat anymore or not. But uh, I think that, um, you know, again, this is, it's a little bit of variety for everybody. I think it's, it's, it seems like it's harder and harder nowadays in wrestling to establish yourself as a, uh, as a villain. And sometimes it's hard to to make people really like you and sometimes it, when you cross over or you mix the two of them together you come up with the best uh, blend of the two of them I, I don't know let me ask you this upon completion of a wrestling match uh, and you've had the opportunity to cool down whether it's Madison Square Garden or it's uh, a 5,000 seat venue in uh, San Antonio Texas how long does it take before Bret Hart says to himself did I get my message across to the crowd tonight? Did the crowd respond to me the way I want them to respond? Because ultimately you are a wrestler, you are an athlete, but you are also an entertainer. Um, I don't think I really have ever, I've ever had a problem with that because I think in contrast to almost all the other wrestlers that I can think of, uh, when I go out to the ring, I go out to the ring as me. I'm not this persona or somebody else's uh, character. I'm Bret Hart, and I go out, and I, I don't have any problem being Bret Hart, and uh, I don't have any problem being accepted by uh, by the audience. You know, if they don't like me, I think that uh, you know I, if I would find it kind of um, confusing, maybe, but uh, it wouldn't bother me. We just saw a video, of course, of uh, Bret Hart versus uh, Shawn Michaels, a match that took place as part of. Uh, a tag team bout at Madison Square Garden this past Sunday, which, by the way, did uh, record business, record dollars for uh, Vince McMahon and the World Wrestling Federation, which would uh, appear to lay to rest uh, talk that the uh, house show business is down when one uh, equates uh, house shows with the World Wrestling Federation. Comes WrestleMania. You're going to break the mold. A baby face versus a baby face. Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. How do you put that match over? 
how do you uh, get your fan to buy into a match where there's no legitimate heat being generated by either party up top? Well, I think that the, the most um, interesting part about this kind of a matchup is that people always look at it and they go, um, like, he's going to have his core of fans and I'm going to have my core uh -huh. of fans. And I think people, when they see him go through, you know, the curtain and he goes to the ring, they're going to go, he's really, really good. This guy never, ever loses. And then all of a sudden they're going to hit my music and I'm going to walk out and they go, this guy is really, really good. Mm. And he never loses. And the second that bell rings, they're going to have, you're going to have uh, a captive audience because they don't know what's going to happen. And uh, I think that is always the best element. It's not so much good guys and bad guys. You know, you always love that element of, of, uh, of that mystery of uh, you don't know what can happen. And I think you're also looking at a very close fight, I think, which makes it very interesting. Be objective, if you possibly can be. Ted Turner, World Championship Wrestling. What has Turner brought to your party ever since he connected himself with WCW? Um... Well, I don't know. I mean, I'll be the first to say that competition is always healthy. You know, I don't, I don't think that that is, uh, there's anything wrong with that. Um, Have you been approached by Turner to shift gears and join his uh, company? Uh, no, no. There was actually rumor of it, but uh, it's, it's news to me. Uh -huh. But uh, um, the, re the biggest reason I'd, I wouldn't go to the WCW, I mean, loyalty is always something that I, I take a lot of pride in. And, uh, and I think that... Um, what really what it amounts to for me is when I look at the WCW, I don't even really consider Ted Turner. I don't know anything about Ted Turner. Mm -hmm. You know, he seems, you know, I don't involve myself so much with that aspect of it. I think that um, for me, the thing I consider about the WCW in contrast to the WWF is you have to look at, you know, and it's not a matter of money. I'm not in this profession necessarily for the money. I mean, money is very nice, but mm -hmm. I, I'm in it more for the, the art form, I think and the, the, just the, the, the business it, itself. And I, the way I look at it is um, the WWF is continually always making strides in the, in the, to me in the forward direction for this business. And uh, I personally think that the WCW is, uh, is, is and always has been second rate. You know, I, just as a small example, I really don't even like their, I don't like their rings. The rings are smaller and they're bouncier like trampolines. And uh, I, I would hate to see myself ever have to lower myself to that and find myself in a situation where as an artist I'm restricted and I have to work in a ring that's uh, bouncier and it's harder on my knees uh, and it's smaller which makes it look faster but it's not necessarily faster. Are there wrestlers before we break who have uh, departed Vince McMahon, Titan Sports and the World Wrestling Federation to jump to Ted Turner who you are resentful towards because you feel they were uh, disloyal to a Vince McMahon? Uh, not really. I think that uh, I think it's a personal thing, you know, I think also that uh, everyone has a right to take care of themselves as best they can, you know, I think sometimes I think some of them made the decision because maybe they were forced into it, like I think Randy Savage was the guy that was kind of getting left on the back burner and he finally jumped and left it. Mm. And I look at Randy and I said that was a guy that shouldn't have had to do that, but uh, at the same time there's other guys that have left that I, I think, in the, even in the case of uh, Diesel, Again, I think he did it maybe for money, if that's if that's the reason. But I don't I don't think that um, that his career is going to go forward anymore. I think it's going to digress, and I think that uh, he'll miss where he was, and I think he'll he'll have a longing. I think even this past week, I think he'll sense that you know it was wonderful and something more important to wrestle in front of uh, huge audiences. And I think when it comes down to the little you know the mo the money difference, I don't think the money will be that much different, if if at all, or maybe worse. We continue with a man who uh, Vince McMahon will tell you is the best there was, the best there is, and the best there ever will be. Defending World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion Bret Hitman Hart, who of course made events WrestleMania 12, March 31st, Anaheim, California. This, my friends, the hardware that Mr. Hart will be displaying. Back we are with uh, Bret Hart, second generation wrestler. His father, of course, was a wrestler. Um, 
You mentioned Diesel, a.k.a. Kevin Nash, a guy who played basketball over in Europe. Uh, Vince McMahon spends uh, a significant amount of time building this guy up. Razor Ramon is also departing the World Wrestling Federation. You mentioned uh, the fact that you think Diesel will regret the move. In the case of a guy like Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall, once again, uh, very much a creation of Vince McMahon. Is he going to regret this move to Turner? Uh, if, if they're artists, I mean, unless, they're, unless maybe from the onset that they're interested in this business strictly from the money aspect, which maybe some people are, uh, I didn't get that impression from either one of them. I got the impression that they're both very, um, you know, interested in where this business goes and uh, mm -hmm. take a, took a lot of pride in their in their product <laughs> and again like the, if that's the case then I think that they'll be miserable about two years from now because they're going to realize that they they went to a second-rate organization that uh, is never going to take them to the heights that they were at before over the years you've had uh, some characters who in the uh, vernacular of Vince McMahon are off the charts I mean, you and I have both joked about the uh, personality of The Undertaker. Let me ask you about a guy you've got right now, uh, Dustin Rhodes, the son of uh, Dusty Rhodes, legendary uh, Southern-based wrestler affiliated with uh, Ted Turner and World Championship Wrestling. Dustin Rhodes departs uh, World Championship Wrestling, signs with Vince McMahon and uh, the WWF. He is now billed as Gold Dust. His character uh, has rudiments, very strong rudiments of transvestism. Does that make you uncomfortable at all? Mm. I will say that a couple of times I think it's, you know, maybe crossed the line just a pinch. But it's not, a, I don't think it, has, it hasn't done anything yet that's made me go, geez, I think that they got to nix that. Or, uh, you know, I, I kind of think that, you know, back in the 50s, I'm sure there was people talking about Gorgeous George Excellent. the same way, saying this is, un, you know, get this guy off the air. And, you know, it's the 90s now, it's, you know, so maybe this is the answer to Gorgeous George for the 90s. I don't know. All I know is that it's very tough to... That seems like it anyway to find something that you can really hate, and uh, he's accomplished that. So, uh, you know, all the power to him. I, I'd kind of hate to see him go. Well, it's interesting from the standpoint that as uh, Dustin Rhodes, he was a stiff. As Dustin Rhodes, he was basically ineffective when it came to uh, uh, taking the hands off the lap of a live audience. But as Gold Dust, as uh, was seen in the garden on Sunday, I mean, this guy generates legitimate heat. I mean, this guy uh, can turn a crowd. Upside down. Yeah, it's it's uh, amazing what a difference it is. It's two totally different uh, career. Ch it's a career change for him. It's putting it mildly. Let's hop on the phone lines. 1-800-810-TALK as we uh, continue our conversation with Bret Hart. The Hitman, WrestleMania 12, March 31st, available on pay-per-view. Over in uh, Connecticut, Chris is on the line. Chris, my friend, uh, go ahead and apply the uh, double arm bar. All right. Hi, Chad. How you doing? Great. Thank you. How you doing, Brett? Excellent. I saw you in Hartford in Friday night. It was a great match. Thank you. Listen, I read a rumor in one of the uh, newsletters that says after WrestleMania and the tour of Germany, you're going to pursue acting full time, like the Lonesome Dove type thing. And I wanted to make sure there, if the rumor was true, or not true, ask you phone to face, so to speak. What's the deal? Well, um, Lonesome Dove got canceled, so uh, which incidentally broke my heart. <laughs> but. Uh, that was the number one ranked television show in Canada at one time, correct? Yeah, I don't really know what happened. I think they, you know, they tell me that it got bad time slots and it killed their ratings. Uh -huh. and, you know, it's all above my, you know, above my head. But uh, it got canceled and uh, it kind of broke my heart. As far as, uh, you know, acting, uh, I, I would, I would take any chance I could get, any opportunity I could get at acting. Uh, I, I wait for that opportunity. Uh, mostly because, uh, again, I'd like to explore that. Um, my wrestling career, I tell you, I, I think after uh, WrestleMania, uh, depending on what happens in my match with Shawn Michaels, um, I'd have to just evaluate it from that point. If um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what could happen. If I, if I was to lose to Shawn Michaels, I would seriously consider, uh, you know. Uh, you know, maybe hanging up my tights. I, I, you know, again, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. At the same time, um, I don't have any uh, doubts in my mind that, uh, you know, at WrestleMania, that Shawn Michaels will see, as will the rest of the world, that uh, that I'm the best ever, and that uh, in a 60-minute Iron Man match <coughs> with Shawn Michaels, I think the one real thing that is going to come out in that match is that Shawn Michaels 
you know, is very good again, but uh, he never will, ever will be as good as I am. Well, let's uh, mention, by the way, on that card, uh, Goldust will face uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, the Ultimate Warrior, in the uh, Ultimate Return match versus Hunter Hurst Helmsley, who, by the way, happens to be a hell of a nice guy. Uh, a big six-man tag match with Vader, Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, versus uh, Yokozuna. Ahmed Johnson, who is uh, affectionately referred to by my little seven-year-old boy Tyler as Old Man Johnson, and uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, plus uh, Diesel, Kevin Nash versus The Undertaker. Your ring personality, don't you capitalize on being an almost James Dean, Sean Penn type of anti-hero, the dark glasses, the strut, the very stoic expression. Uh, you don't often grin when you're in the ring. Isn't your persona one of being kind of uh, uh, establishment, yet there is a defiance about you that the audience buys into? I don't know. You know, I've never, you know, I just wake up every day and that's You're saying, you know, what you what see is what you get. He is you know? a shrink? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I look at role models, you know, I look at people out there. And I really never really took it into account what a role model was until the last, I guess, until I became the world wrestling fan, how really big it is. You know, I've been mobbed at the Wailing Wall in uh, Israel. I've been, uh, I got mobbed at the Taj Mahal a few weeks ago in I India. It's just amazing. And it's always small children. And you realize that these children, they don't just look up to you as a, an athlete or an entertainer. They look up to you as, um, as a superhero. And uh, mm -hmm. I've taken a tremendous amount of pride in that. And I realize that, um, you know, I don't ever want to let those fans down that really, everything I do is uh, fabricated or, uh -huh. or put on. I, I really try my heart, the hardest to be as genuine and sincere as possible. About a year ago, you and I had the opportunity to uh, talk, and you mentioned the fact that uh, above and beyond a wrestling uh, talent, which you obviously possess, talent as an actor, you're also a painter, and that you had painted a particular picture for Hulk Hogan and that this occupied a great deal of your time, and that this was something that uh, you wanted to offer to Hulk Hogan as um, a way of stating your admiration for Hulk Hogan, and that you were met with a very negative, a very cold response, which obviously had an effect on you. Could you relate well, that story to me? Well, actually, the story behind that was uh, actually my cartoonist. I draw yeah. cartoons. Actually, he was very pleasant about that. Um, it was just, I gave him the picture, and I thought he'd, you know, I think, you know he had... Uh, rode off into the sunset. It was my understanding of things, and uh, this is right after WrestleMania 8. And when he came back to the WWF, he came back like a, just after I became the champion. And uh, as I remember, Vince McMahon told me, "So don't don't worry about Hulk Hogan coming back. He's going to come back and just do some tag teams to uh, boost his movie career." And uh, so I didn't, but it wouldn't have bothered me anyway, if because uh, Hulk Hogan was this tremendous hero to me. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a small thing, but when I, when I finally did get to see Hulk Hogan uh, uh, and meet him after all these months of being off, and I always thought he would have been very, very proud uh, and, and happy that I'd had the success that I'd had. And when I walked up to him, and I think it was Florence, uh, South Carolina, he was with uh, Brutus Beefcake, and, and I offered my hand, and he, uh, you know, he never accepted it. And I... I stood there for a few minutes kind of frozen in kind of dismay or shock and and then I just kind of uh, you know went down the ramp and did my thing but I always remembered it and kind of I guess it kind of always bothered me that uh, I guess it, from his side of it I guess as soon as I had that belt I was the enemy you know I wasn't this guy that uh, you know busted my ass for for so many years uh, on his undercard and had worked hard and sure. fought for every inch he could get and finally had this uh, uh, had this level of success, and it wasn't. I was immediately in the. Uh, I was the opposition to him, and uh, I think he, to a certain degree, s you know, sought me out to destroy me, and, and probably accomplished that to us. After Top Buck, you all want a main event. You all want to be uh, the Heisman Trophy winner in your profession. Is there room for legitimate friendship amongst wrestlers? I think so. Yeah, I. I, I think the, you know, the biggest problem with that is. Uh, it's just the schedule, you know. You, you know, it's. Uh, we don't have an off season, which is hmm. incredibly hard. So you, you make friends with these people, and then, uh, and then they either go to the WCW, which seems to be a common thing, or vice versa. They, someone, you know, there's a lot of that going on. I guess there always has been. 
or guys that just don't make the grade anymore. They find themselves out of work. When that happens, you never uh, seem to, because for, for me, I've been just going and going and going and going like the little rabbit on the Energizer commercials, but uh, <laughs> I uh, just keep going and going and going. I never have a chance to go back and call up uh, my friends that, that I've made. And, you know, like, I have a lot of friends that I would uh, mm -hmm. love to get back in touch with, but it, over a period of time, you just, it seems like you never do. Once again, the uh, belt will be on the line March 31st out in Anaheim, California. I have been told by uh, Ed Cohen and uh, Jay Andronico from the World Wrestling Federation that the uh, live venue, the pond, is sold out. The event, of course, available on a pay-per-view basis. Let me give you a wrap-up. You still have a ways to go before you reach the big 4-0. And let me tell you, Hart, it's going to devastate you emotionally. <laughs>